across the street from Kenwood High School. I would see uh, R. Kelly there on a regular basis, and these were high school girls, freshmen, sophomores. I couldn't tell exactly, but I know they were students at the, at the high school. His nickname is not Pie Piper for nothing. Pie Piper's whole purpose is to bring the, the young people to him, to follow him, to admire him, to listen to him. And so he's good at it. I was 14 years old. We'd always see him come in by himself, but leave with, with some student. With me, girls, Robert would, um, I would a lot of times make people know that R. Kelly's here. You would see the Ford Explorer a lot. There were a bunch of girls in Kenwood jackets, in high school clothes. You would see him and his group of guys come in and kind of hang out. Mr. Kelly wants to meet you. That is riveting, and that's just a small clip of the docu-series on Lifetime right now. It's a three-parter. It's called Surviving R. Kelly. It's getting a lot of attention, and you can see why just from that small clip. Despite years of allegations of abuse and sexual misconduct and a criminal case, the R&B singer hasn't felt the career blow that it's taken down other more powerful men in the Me Too era. He just hasn't felt it. He's still releasing songs. Last year, the Time's Up organization called on the music industry to mute R. Kelly, but he's still with his record label, RCA Records, and again, still releasing music. A report from Billboard says the singer's lawyer alleges the documentary is filled with false allegations. Kelly is denying any wrongdoing. We reached out to his representative. They said no comment. Lots to talk about here. Want to bring in TV host and pop culture commentator John Murray. Uh, John, good to see you. You have interviewed R. Kelly. There is no doubt he is a talent. But his ex-wife in this documentary documentary says, look, R. Kelly is fun-loving, fun, but Robert, his real name, is the devil, she calls him. Oh, Susan, I thought you were tossing to a clip. Uh, uh, listen, Andrea Kelly really survived hell. And listen, um, R. Kelly is, there are a lot of people that overuse the term genius, but mm -hmm. the, the truth is, he is a musical genius. And the reason that he's been able to get away with his actions for so long is people have been so moved by his music. His music is the soundtrack to a lot of folks' lives. And because of the music and because of the hits and because mm -hmm. he's been able to do every genre and work with all the superstars we know and love, we've turned a blind eye. Pop culture, music, entertainment, Entertainment, the African American community has turned a blind eye to his shenanigans and he's gone along with it and got away mm -hmm. with it for way too long. And this riveting documentary made people face the reality of the real R. Kelly last night. Yeah. And the founder of the Me Too movement says this is really about an adult man using power and wealth to systematically degrade little black girls. And he's been able to do it for a very long time. And you have to hand it to this documentary uh, creator who went to all of these people, got a lot of no's, but a lot of yeses to people speaking out about R. Kelly. Absolutely. There, there's so many significant people uh, featured in this documentary, people that were a part of his life, uh, his family, his business. They're superstars, they're music people. But this documentary was done with the emphasis on trying to get these girls that are currently in his house out of his house. I know people who were working for R. Kelly, Susan, up until very recently, and I can tell you from the stories that they have shared with me, what's happening in R. Kelly's house is worse than most horror films that we have in theaters right now. It is treacherous, the things that he's done to some of these young lady, ladies. And I know a woman in particular who he tried to get into the house who was able to realize what was going on and she avoided becoming a casualty like the girls who are currently there. An ex-wife even said, look, I was contemplating suicide at one point. She said, she went on to say she's glad she did not, but he was that horrific to live with. Uh, John Legend is speaking out against him and people are saying he's courageous for doing so, but in his tweet he said, don't praise me, praise this documentary. And he also says this, we should all thank my friend, Dream Hampton, for her very necessary work to create this Surviving R. Kelly. These survivors deserve to be lifted up and heard. I hope it gets them close, closer to some kind of justice. So, John, it makes me wonder, will this finally uh, come to justice? Like we saw with Bill Cosby, years of apparently doing something, everyone turned a blind eye if they did know about it, kind of keeping it to themselves. Now, after this documentary, I wonder if he will face any charges.
You know, Susan, I know R. Kelly is very scared. I talked to some people close to him today, and they told me that R. Kelly uh, reached out to a bunch of people who he is friends with, who was former friends, former employees, and he asked everybody to post a photo with him last night on social media with the hashtag, we support R. Kelly. R. Kelly is fearful of going to prison. He is fearful that this documentary will make uh, authorities finally uh, come down and drop the hammer of the law on him. I always call him the O.J. Simpson of the music industry because he um, was able to get off on the charges the first time with the sex tape uh, that you could obviously tell it was him in it um, because of the delays and stuff in Chicago that he Mm -hmm. even got worse. And so I hope that, you know, we've seen powerful men uh, come down in the Me Too era in less than a year. But mm-hmm. I do believe that if the girls in R. Kelly's house look more like Lindsay Lohan and, and, and more like Miley Cyrus, this would have ended a long time ago. Yeah, and John, a mention again of Dream Hampton, who put this riveting documentary together. John Murray, thank you. Anytime, Susan.